Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. <sighs> so I'll tell you, I'm, I'm always in a good mood and always might be a bit generous, but like it's close to the truth. Like I really am always in a good mood. I read this book when I was younger with, um, with your like first sweethearts, right? There was this girl that we, um, we lived down the block from each other. Our last names were very close to each other, meaning you sat next to that person in all of the classes. Her last name was C-A-I minus C-A-L. Good morning, Brian. And we had the opportunity to kind of become friends, like pick on each other, tease this and that. And what was cool is, uh, good morning, Ian. Oh, from Alberta, Canada. What's cool is we were both like ugly ducklings, right? Like I was very unpopular as a child and so was she. And then in eighth grade, we suddenly became popular, right? Like God blessed us with some type of attraction. And we still had that close knit bond because we knew who the other person was, right? Like we knew who the person really was. And throughout grade school and throughout all the different schools, we kind of always resort back to each other. Like, oh, I went out with so-and-so, I went out with so-and-so. And then sophomore year of high school, we decided to date and it lasted for six years until she moved away, which was difficult, but you know, um, I'm sure she's happy. I haven't spoken to her in like decades and I'm, I'm very happy. Point of story being, she, because we knew each other so well, there was this one book that she recommended to me and she's like, Aunt, let's read it together. And it was called Conversations with the Other Side by Sylvia Brown. And Sylvia Brown is a psychic and a lot of people think, okay, psychic, crazy, you know, crazy, crazy, crazy. But her family was from Brazil and they believed in a lot of spiritual stuff, which is cool. I'm, I'm open to everything. And the point of the book was that your life is pre-planned before you come here. Now, whether you call it heaven or you call it the other side, it's a perfect environment. And in a perfect environment, you can't actually learn anything. And, and it's funny because I never, I never put that together, right? Like, that's true. If everything's perfect, how do you learn something? You only learn through error and, and fixing it. So that made sense to me. So to go ahead and um, improve your soul to become this really um, learned, um, you know, spirit, whatever you want to call it, you had to come to Earth or the other side. And when you came to Earth or the other side, you had a plan. I want to learn how it feels to do this. I want to learn this. I want to learn this. And it's in that that it allowed me a certain sense of understanding for really bad stuff, right? Like when you look at the world and say, how can there be a, you know, you name it, God, whatever, in a world that this happens or in a world that this happens or in a world that this happens. And very early on, this book had, you know, maybe because I wanted to find the answer or maybe the answer was brought to me, but everything since that point, when something goes bad, I don't look at it as personal. Like I don't, hey, good morning, Frida. I, the book was very um, blame the event, not the person, because you don't know why the person did what they did. The basis is every person does everything that they ever do because they personally believe it's a good idea. Well, Aunt, why did someone shoot someone? Well, in that moment, they thought it was a good idea to do it. Like no one does anything thinking it's a bad idea. They do something and they might know it's going to end up being a bad idea or that it has a bad outcome. But in the moment, it provides enough pleasure that in that moment they do it and it's a good idea. So in this world, I've, I very rarely ever get surprised. Like anytime anyone does anything, I'm like, okay, well, that was really heinous, but they're learning something and this is their path. And I don't judge them. I, 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 I could judge the action, right? Like shooting someone bad, but the person that did it, I don't know who they are. I don't know why they did it. I don't know what they're trying to learn, what they're trying to feel. And it works both ways. So if you follow the line of thinking that to be the most learned soul, the most learned individual ever, well, you can't just see it from one side, right? You can't just say, well, I wonder what it's like to, I, I wonder what the perspective is of somebody that grew up as a burn victim and the, the trials and tribulations they have to go through in their life. Well, yeah, you'll, you'll learn that. But what does it take for someone to actually go ahead and burn someone else? What does it take in the mindset? What does their life look like? Whether you look at this objectively as, well, Ant, I would never do that. That's not the question. The question is, is your life as learned as possible if you don't um, absorb or absorb that experience? And the answer is no. So in the calculation to be the most learned individual, you kind of have to do both things, right? You have to be the victim, but you also have to be the villain. And 
you know, that's uh, it's me kind of going on a bit of a riff and, and sharing a little bit about who I am. But when I get on the calls every morning, I say, I'm really happy. This is a really great day. I always mean it. That doesn't mean like a bazillion bad things didn't happen, right? Like there's like five things right now that I know that I have to solve today. And if I don't solve them, tomorrow's not going to be a good day. But that's fine. Like we'll get there. Um, but is today a great day? Yeah, actually, it's in New Jersey. It's like 60 degrees. I, I brought my son to school today and didn't wear a jacket and he loved it. Anyway, OK, so that's that. Um, what's on the plate today? So a couple of things in in Rhino Hub. Well, actually, let me just let's just do some fun stuff today. So I'm going to share a screen. I don't know what's behind here, so I hope it's nothing too bad. Um, Rhino Hub. All right. If I was Rhino Hub, where'd I be? OK, so I'm already in Rhino Hub. Let me get out of it. Save progress, save and exit, right? That sounds like fun. OK. So let's get into it. And I'm an admin, so I could just log in that way. Now, a couple of things I want to show you that's super cool. Now, on the home screen, we did change it so it's a little bit more agnostic. It's not, hey, today's such and such date because we don't want to change it every day. Plus, after 21 days, we're not going to be changing it every day, but everyone that sees it will be seeing it in a new day. In fact, there are people seeing this today that joined this week and their orientation starts next week, right? So of the people that started from day one, yeah, everything's live. Today's day four for you. But there's about, I think, 12 or 13 people that have since joined this week who haven't had their orientation yet. It's still Monday of next week. So this page has to be a bit agnostic to what's today's date. But coolest thing ever. So I always tell you, we're doing like really cool stuff over here. And, you know, maybe I'm just like a kid in a candy store. But we used, it's, it's taken like three weeks, but we, and it's still not done, right? But we went ahead and coded all the AI stuff that we have to equal our own bot. So when you scroll down, you see Rhino Assistant. Now there's, now we need to go ahead and code it with everything Rhino. So for instance, if somebody mentions something about them and come up with like 10,000 keywords that resolve, revolve around money, we'll go ahead and identify and respond to that word, um, create this sentence afterwards and make a suggestion based on that, that maybe they should take a look at Rhino Welt, right? So this is effectively going to be our assistant. It, it's, it'll be everything. It'll be our sales coordinator. It'll be our, like, say, for instance, I'm like, hey, I'm in Rhino Hub, and I would like to create a diet plan customized to me. I'm six foot two, weigh 240 pounds and these are all real stats so i know i'm a little big i have no food allergies i do love um steak and i do love snacks i would would like to i can't type in the morning apparently to lose Weight. Oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. And gain muscle mass. Can you offer me an optimal diet strategy for one day? All right. Somebody better answer me. Now, I haven't tried this yet, so if this doesn't work, I'm going to feel real. I'm going to check with ChatGPT for a better answer for you. So we need to obviously make this taller, right? And so let me show you, I'm gonna check with ChatGPT for a better answer for you. What that means is it's a logic that we built into it. If anything that I said revolves around or can be credited or can be, could be Rhino centric, like if we can solve it, it goes to us first. If we cannot solve it, ChatGPT is gonna solve it for you. Sure, here's an optimal diet strategy for one day. Breakfast, two scrambled eggs, half a cup of oatmeal, half a cup of blueberries, and one cup of black coffee. Snack, one half cup of Greek yogurt with one quarter cup of almonds. Lunch, four ounces of grilled chicken, one cup of steamed broccoli, one half a cup of brown rice, and one half cup of carrots. Snack, and I mean, you can read the rest, right? 
So obviously, and I thought we did this, so I got to get back with my tech guy. This needs to be, um, the height needs to be bigger because this is not a fun user experience to have to scroll through this, especially if I want to continue the conversation, right? Like, I don't like cottage cheese. What would you suggest as a substitute? If you don't like cottage cheese, you could try regolta cheese, Greek yogurt, or cork, or cork as substitutes, right? Like that's pretty cool. This is this is not a real person, right? Um, so this has to be worked on a little bit more. We need to get it rhino first. Go ahead and offer suggestions, and even okay, great. Do you want to plan this? We'll send you out a calendar. Like there's stuff we still need to do. But how cool is that? Um, and then I'm on share screen. Oh, well, actually, yeah. So I'm on share screen. So let me show you one more cool thing. Um, okay. Allow. So also, we spoke yesterday about making merch stuff. And we have a store. We haven't really done anything with it. In fact, I shopped on it last week, and my stuff comes in today. I bought the shoes, and I'm, like, seriously so excited. But um, somebody said, um, I think it was Maurice, hey, notebooks. Here's the thing, as I'm creating stuff, I realize I'm not really a designer, right? Like, duh. But you want to make the notebook so cool. And everything in Rhino is it's got to be the coolest thing ever. It's got to be something that if somebody did not know, this is the standard, if somebody did not know Rhino, would they still purchase it? That's the standard. So I actually spent three hours yesterday trying to learn how to be a designer. And I think I've gotten somewhere. So what I'm going to show you, I only designed one item, by the way, in three hours. So Anthony's time is really uh, embarrassing, but okay. And we'd still need to redesign the, sh the store. So when John was with us, um, I think he was actually s smarter than, than anyone. And what I mean by that is he knew how to pander to me in a good way, right? Like in any employee boss relationship, you should make your boss happy. So that's not a bad thing, but I'm so blind to what makes me happy that if someone knows, just say Rhino or just give me green and I'm like, oh yeah, duh, like sure. Um, and he was really good at that. So the store was completely green. I took a little green out. It's very caricature. Um, we wanna make it more serious. So again, total credit to him. He did his job. Me, I need to do better at doing my job. So here I am. Um, now here's the notebook I made. So obviously you see the collections, a quality collection, and that's uh, the shoes and this type of stuff. It's all, this is equality. This is equal in different languages learn earn succeed this is going to be strictly for rhino hub we're well, not strictly but um cater to rhino hub dream loudly will be kind of like household items and stuff that we just think are amazing and children's corner it's going to be called kids corner and i really want to get into writing children's books and before anyone says aunt you know like you have enough on your plate i have enough tech that i can thoughtfully write a book um, and we did that with rufus the rhino in fact i showed everyone um, but I do care about children. Like I do want all of the education and all the stuff that we're doing to be in a to be in a digestible for children. So, for instance, say we're doing Salesforce, and that's really really complicated. Well, is it possible to teach a child how important um, CRM management and that stuff is in a fun story with great characters that the child could say, "Oh, great, um, yeah, I'm very familiar with that concept." Like they don't need to know how to code and press certain buttons, but they could be familiar with trends that are the future. Therefore, when they get introduced to them, there'll be um, an easy evolution to it. And that's what matters. And family stuff and all the rest. So that's that. <sighs> Without further ado, though, take a look at my book. How cool is this? You know, for someone that can't design, that is freaking cool. Like, I can't, you know, and of course, I just, you know, pressed enter for all of this stuff, blah, blah, blah. Like I need to make this page better. It needs to have previews and there's stuff that needs to be done. But in terms of an actual design, I mean, come on, like Anthony knows what he's doing. Um, so I have a lot more to do with that today and tomorrow. So I'm gonna stop the share. And when Marie says, wow, that's like super duper duper.